Praise the Lord. I welcome you all in the house of the Lord and uh, those who are joining us online as well. Thank you very much for your faithfulness and thank you for choosing to worship with us. And we pray that God's blessing will be upon you uh, as you worship the Lord together with us. We are so glad to see everyone and um, it is our joy and honor to be present in the house of the Lord to worship Him. Let's just close our eyes and we'll give this time uh, into the Lord's hands. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this new day that you have given to us. And we are so grateful, God, that um, uh, you have made us all in the likeness of yourself and you have given us your love, your mercy, and your peace, as well as your good health. And uh, this morning, Lord, as we get ready to worship you in this house, we pray that your presence will be here in our midst. We pray, Lord, that we will, um, with all our hearts and with all our minds and with all that we have, worship you. And um, worship and magnify your name. We thank you so much for all the people who are joined together with us online. We give them into your hands wherever they are joining from. We pray that your presence will be there with them. And as they worship with us, let them be um, um, partakers of your blessings today. We thank you so much. We give the time of singing and worship into your mighty hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you very much. Please uh, um, just welcome the music team as they lead us into a time of worship and praise. God bless you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, Blessed be the name of the Lord. 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 Oh, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, The name of the Lord is the name of the Lord.
Blessed be the Lord God Almighty Who was in his and is to come Blessed be the Lord Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
to the Lord. He's a good God. This is a good day. And just turn around, say hi to someone. We can't physically meet, but just say hi to someone before you sit down. And uh, let's welcome our senior pastor as he comes uh, to bring the word. If you have your Bibles, take them out. Uh, notebook, pen, pencil, whatever you have, get ready to get something from the word today. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. It's good to see you all here. If you remember, but still the Lord is here and you are here. That what gives us majority and you will be blessed. And we want to just thank you. God is so good. I'm sure you're glad that you have taken time out to be with us. We pray that you will be enriched today. I want you to turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 2 book of Hebrews and uh, chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. We'll read that verse, verse, those verses. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Okay. <clears throat> I'm reading from verse 1. You can follow it on the screen if you want to in Hindi or English. Verse 1 says, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by the angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect to uh, so great a salvation which at first was uh, which at first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him verse 4 god also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the holy ghost according to his own will. I want us to go back to verse 1. That's where uh, I will be bringing, uh, ministering from, verse 1. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should be let them slip. Uh, you, those last words are important, lest at any time we should let them slip. Or you can say that at any time we might get, we flow away from him, flow away, drift away from what we have read and studied. This morning my topic is, are you flowing away from the Lord? Are you going away from the Lord? Hallelujah, Father thank you. 
in the name of Jesus, we can be in this place today. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for guiding, leading, directing us. Thank you for protecting us, O Lord, in all ways. And I, Lord, we are grateful that we are here today. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, take control, anoint us, bless us, that we might be enriched today and grow in the spiritual realm. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Keeping that in mind, the question, are you flowing away from the Lord? I want to give you an, uh, an example or a story, a true story, that actually happened to me and some of my friends way back several years ago. And um, it was uh, my brother-in-law and um, Joseph Narsaya, some of you might remember him, and uh, David Sami. We all decided to go out fishing in the harbor, uh, Suva Harbor. We hired a boat from Nasese and we had the engine. My brother-in-law had the engine and we went uh, with the intention of fishing in the harbor. But what happened after a little while, when we finished in one place and we wanted to move out to a different location uh, in the harbor, we tried to start the engine and it won't start. Something happened, it just won't start. So we got so busy trying to see what was wrong with the engine. All of us, four of us were there. And we're trying to find out what went wrong with the engine. And after about five, ten minutes, we realized that we were not in the place where we were. We didn't have any anchor and the boat was slipping away, was flowing away, was getting close to the entrance of the harbor. And we, we panicked at that time and we didn't know what to do. And there was oars in it, and I asked, anybody can use these oars? And nobody could do that. And I was the only one who had some experience in using the oars. And so I said, okay, I'll do it. And I tell you, that was the, the Lord giving us the strength that I was able to row that boat from, from the very close to the, the entrance to the harbor, right down to the Nasese uh, walls over there where we got off. What I'm getting here is this. <coughs> My message is based upon flowing away, drifting away, without knowing. Um, <clears throat> this is what it says in verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we heard, lest at any time we should let them slip away. Give heed to the things that we have learned. In other words, the things, the teachings that has been given to us, the, the, the things that we learn in church, the things that we learn from the word of God, the things that we learn in Sunday school, it talks about giving heed to it. Let it screw it down in your mind. Pay attention to it and work according to it. Because the danger of drifting or flowing away is not only for the physical realm, like the boat drifting away, but it also affect, uh, it has to do with our spiritual life. We can drift away in the spiritual life. The warning against drifting, the warning against flowing away is here for us all. Unfortunately and sadly, this is a very common thing among Christians to see them flow away towards destruction. There are many believers, many Christians who have uh, carelessly, they got careless, they didn't pay heed to the teachings and they find themselves drifting away until they, you know what happens if a, if a boat drifts away, flows away without any control, chances are it will hit something and could be destroyed and sink. Now, um, to, to flow away, to, to drift, it really requires no effort at all. You, you don't have to do anything to just flow away without any directions. All you have to do is stop the rowing. You know, you stop rowing. Or you have an engine that breaks down in the sea or in a river. And then what will happen? The boat will begin to drift. It will flow. It will just go wherever the water takes him. And um, uh, that is a very dangerous place, thing to do. The same is very true for Christians. Which, uh, which is why we are told in uh, Hebrews chapter 2, 1, 
we must give the more earnest heed to the things that we have heard and the things that has been taught to us. Take heed means to pay attention to it, to, to screw it down in your system, in your mind, in your heart, the things that are taught to you, whether it is through preaching or in Sunday school or just by your personal study. Take heed, establish it in your heart so that you don't drift away, you don't flow away. Now, this uh, flowing away uh, is something that is a, it's an unconscious process. And this is what happens when, you know, actually this is what happened to us. We were trying to fix the engine. We were trying to find out what was wrong with the engine. Why wasn't it starting? We had enough gas, everything was there, but it just won't start. And we were so busy doing that, suddenly we realized that we were not where we were supposed to. The boat was drifting towards the sand bank and towards the entrance of the harbor. Uh, it was very unconscious. We did not know what was happening. So there are, there are um, sometimes we also have uh, uh, undercurrents. Um, uh, uh, you know, when you, when you go in the sea and you'll find that sometimes on the top, the water is flowing one way. The tide will show you it will be going one way. But actually at the bottom, it will be flowing in a different way. So there are undercurrents that will be unnoticeable from the top. You will know what's happening down below and the chances are you will get caught in it. This is the same thing true in our spiritual realm. Many Christians slowly, slowly, slowly they flow away, they drift away uh, from, what they, from where they're supposed to be in their faith, in their practice, in whatever they do, they flow away because um, unconsciously, they don't realize where many Christians, they slowly drift away. There are many churches that have got caught into uh, different practices and different doctrines, different uh, uh, things. What they say, well, you know, if that's good for that other church, we will do it too. And so they get involved in that and suddenly they find the, they're far away from the scriptures and false teachings and all that takes place in the church and the church closes down. So, in the spiritual realm, uh, realm, that's the same thing. Unconsciously, we get caught into that. I want us to take uh, you to some of the things that will, <coughs> that, um, um, uh, that will help us to understand this. One of the things I want you to know is that you never flow or drift upstream. If a, if a boat is there, no engine, no power, no oars, and it is left in the water, in the sea or river, it will never go upstream. It will always go downstream. It will go down and down and down and um, uh, until uh, you find that it is um, uh, out of reach. Now, uh, faithfulness... <clears throat> To the unfaithfulness to the Lord is like rowing against the current, against the tide. Um, unfaithfulness to the Lord is like rowing upstream. You're trying to go upstream by rowing. Uh, that is faith, faithlessness. But the Bible encourages us that we must constantly be adding to our faith. In Second Peter, Second Peter. Uh, one and five. We must add to our faith, which means that when you are reading, when you are studying, you must apply those things to your life. <coughs> what you learned yesterday, your faith was something and then you need to add to it to strengthen your faith so that you become a strong Christian. So adding to your faith is very important. And then the other thing is that we must continue to grow. To grow means to read the word of God. To grow means to spend time in prayer. To grow means to have fellowship with fellow Christians. Because if you don't grow, then what will happen is the moment you stop growing, you start going backwards and downwards. Like a boat, like this particular incident that we've had. We stopped. The engine stopped. We're not rowing. Nothing was happening. We were so busy doing, uh, trying to fix the engine up. 
when the boat began to flow and drift away uh, into a dangerous situation. And so it could have been disaster. When you stop growing, it's just like that, going backwards or downwards in the river, and it could lead you to destruction because when you start flowing, whether it is in the sea or in the river, eventually it will get speed up. You know, it will start flowing very fast. Slowly, 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 it will increase. There's a story told about a couple of young people who were um, out in the river in a different country. They were fishing, and uh, <clears throat> they didn't realize that their boat was um, flowing or drifting away until they heard the sound of the waterfall. But when they heard the sound of the waterfall, it was too late. They were caught in that current and they couldn't escape. And a few days later, they found the bodies of the three young men because they did not, uh, because they let it flow. So those are dangers over there when you are not careful about it. Because the, in the stream or in the uh, sea or even in the river, wherever it is, when you start flowing, it eventually will gather speed and you will not have any control and you will drift away. Um, when you start hearing, the, in this case, when they heard the, the sound of the waterfall, it was too late. It was too late. So uh, the other thing that is important is uh, in, in, when you are in the sea or land, wherever it might be, if you are flowing, if the boat is drifting away, one of the important thing is to sight the land. You must see the land. If you see the land, you know that you have some hope and you might be able to go there. But what happens is this, that you lose sight of the land, then what happens, it is difficult to get out of that situation because you don't know where you're going, north, south, east, west. You'll have no idea at all if you don't see any uh, fixed point, land or a beacon or something like that, uh, that will help you. So you are lost, you start flowing and you could end up into disaster. <clears throat> and this is what happens spiritually. The farther we move from the Lord, we keep going, we become careless about what we are doing and um, less and less of what we are doing we end up into more trouble. The sighting of the land will help us to find a place where we can save ourselves. Land is like, like the solid rock. It's like Jesus Christ. If you keep him in the sight, you know that you are safe. But if you put him out of sight, then you get into more trouble. Now the boat, any boat that is flowing without control in the river or in the sea, wherever it might be, it's just drifting, it becomes a hazard. Hazard to the boat, it could hit some um, submerged uh, rock or sandbank or whatever it might be and could destroy. And not only that, it is a hazard to others also. And this is where we as Christians, we have to be very, very careful that we don't become a hazard to other Christians. Because boat drifting, by itself, with no control, <laughs> becomes a hazard. It could hit into some other boat coming by. They did not know, and it could cause disaster. And this is where I want to just briefly encourage the parents. There are many parents that are drifting. They are flowing away, and they have lose um, the golden opportunity to teach their children about the love of God about the love of Jesus Christ. Because of all the cares of the world, they get so concerned about providing, meeting all the other needs for the children, and they forget the most important thing, and that is Jesus Christ and him, and him alone. So what happens is this, the children begin to flow because they become, uh, I mean, the parents become uh, drifting, they start drifting, flowing away, and you'll find that the children will be affected because of the parent. So the children would uh, uh, begin to do things that you regret. Now, what happened? Why am I, my children doing this? And most probably because 
you were drifting because you're not doing what you're supposed to do, not reading the word of God, not praying, not doing all those things that are necessary to keep them strong. And this is why we find that many are tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, it says in Ephesians. When you get once in the waves in the sea and you have no power, you can't row, you will be just tossed about. You know, the wave will take you just here and there, here and there, until it probably will sink or hit a rock or something and smash it. And this is what happens to many families. Because the parents lose hope, because the parents are lost and they are drifting away, flowing away without any control, no guidance at all, no reading of the scriptures, no praying, no nothing at all. And then what happens is this, that there is disaster. They get uh, all kinds of teachings. Many times they are affected by different teachings. We have that kind of thing happening in Fiji. So many different people come with different teachings and they try to influence people. And many parents get influenced by that. And uh, uh, as a result, they, they, they don't achieve anything. <coughs> as I said, if a boat drifts or flows away, Without control, it will crash on the rocks or go over the falls. And this is what happens to those who um, are flowing, carelessly, drifting spiritually through their own neglect. You see, whenever you go and don't do the things that you're supposed to do, you lose out and many times it is because of your own neglect. You become careless. You become, um, um, and because of your carelessness, you get affected. You start drifting or you start flowing away with the tide. And then the, the result is this, there is a punishment. And once when you do that, you will end up in disaster. Something will happen that will destroy. Destroy your children, destroy your family, destroy you because you have no control. It flows because of your carelessness. You didn't do the thing that was right. You didn't hold on to it. It sort of takes you into disaster. <coughs> I want to go quickly and see some of the common signs of drifting. What are some of the things that we see that shows us that someone is flowing away, going away from the Lord, and this is what <coughs> is... Uh, um, that, that um, helps. One of the things is when a person's uh, desire to study the word of God is not there. His, his desire to study the word of God, reading the word of God is not there. He loses the uh, desire to read, to study. That is a sure sign that they're drifting away because the Bible is a very unique book. You want an answer for anything it's found in the Bible. Information not found anywhere else, you find it in the Bible. When you lose their desire to study God's word, you are flowing away, you are drifting. Because in that you have the answer. You have the answer, you want to know who God is, you want to know what he has done for you, you find it in the word of God. You want to know how to live a life, a family life, neighbor, school, at workplace, whatever it is, any topic at all, you find that in the Bible. If you neglect that, then you will start doing things on your own and the way somebody else tells you from the world and you end up into problem because you neglect the word of God. Never neglect the word of God. Read it and read it and read it. Even if you don't understand it, read it anyway. The spirit of God will guide you into that. The other thing that is a sign of drifting or flowing away from the Lord is prayerlessness. Prayer is a wonderful blessing that God has given to us. It's an avenue by which we communicate with God. We can talk to God. And um, uh, when a Christian begins to pray less and less, he is drifting away from the Lord. I want to know, I want you to be encouraged. I want to encourage you today to spend more time in reading the word of God in pray, prayer. I, I think we have this problem when if we call people to come to prayer, you find that there'll be only two or three coming for prayer. 
we have had in the <coughs> lockdown period, we've been having prayer every week through the uh, online uh, Google Meet. And you know, just a handful will come, six, seven, eight, ten people. Where were the other people? I don't know what they were doing. But the point is this, these are signs of drifting. These are signs of flowing away from the Lord, going away from the Lord. Once when you stop reading the word of God, the unique book, the book that gives us life, there is something wrong. Once when you stop praying, this using, making use of the wonderful blessing that God has given to us, there is something wrong. That's a sign that you are flowing away from the Lord, you are drifting away from the Lord, and we need to get, um, get straightened out. Because if you don't, then it will end up in disaster. It's a saying about this incident that we have had. Once when we realize that we were, uh, we were flowing away, we were going into the wrong direction because we lost control, we immediately took control. We started doing something about it. If we hadn't done that, then we would have gone, probably hit the sand bank or gone into the uh, open sea. But the thing was this, that we realized we were in a wrong and we began to act on it. The other thing that is a sign of, um, a sign of uh, uh, flowing away from God <coughs> is uh, <clears throat> when we begin to uh, begin to stop attending church services. When we purposely decide not to go to attend a worship service, we stay away, we have no desire to go and worship the Lord. If we no longer rejoice in the worship of God or in the presence of the brethren, we are drifting away. So I think we have to be very careful in this area. Worshiping together with the fellow brethren is very important. God desires us that we get together to worship him, to praise him, to magnify him. Because that is the way we honor him. If we don't do that regularly, it's a sign that we are flowing away from the Lord. We are drifting away from the Lord. And we don't want that to happen. It's a sign that we do him. Now, uh, fellowship. Fellowship with believers. Fellowship with God's people. It's very important. It's beyond, not just in the church, even outside. We have fellowship with them. We see that uh, believers, if they are in need, we need to go and talk to them and uh, uh, encourage them and pray for them and show our love for them. And by this way, we edify one another. It's important that we do that. If we don't do that, it's a sign that we are flowing away, far away from the Lord because we are not doing one basic thing that God would have us do is to care for the fellow believers. We need to be more closely attached, whether it's in the church here or even outside, we need to be attached to it. There are times when we as Christians <clears throat> uh, would rather have fellowship or companionship with the unbelievers, uh, with the people of the world, rather than with fellow Christians. So many times this happens that we would rather, you know, go and mix around with the unbelievers and that's a sure sign that we are flowing away from the, from the Lord. And uh, there is a danger. We could have disaster uh, if we do that. We will be hit on the rocks and spiritual destruction will follow because we are uh, more interested in the worldly people. And we have to be very careful in this thing. This modern day and age, we find there are a lot of things that is happening in the world. Uh, the people of the world are doing, they sound so exciting and they want others to do it. They want everybody to do it. They feel that what we are doing is right and everybody should do it. And so many times we Christians get caught in that. Because they are doing, we want to do it too. Because they have it, we want to have it too. And we need to be careful there because if we are not careful uh, and begin to have fellowship with uh, unbelievers, we'll be starting to do the things that the unbelievers are doing and we could end up into a spiritual destruction. The other thing is that uh, that is sign of um, uh, flowing away from the Lord is, you know, when we get saved, the Lord saves us 
he removes all our sin gives us new life and he says you are a new creation all things have passed away and we obey the gospel we know that our sins have been blotted out we become a new creation he wants us one of the things that is required of us is is to talk to others about jesus that experience that you have had you need to talk about it to obey the gospel and that is if you have been saved if god has done some mighty work in you god wants you to share that with somebody else someone who is going through the similar type of experience that you have gone through he wants you to share that and if we don't do that if christian no longer has the desire to take the message of salvation to others that's a sure sign that you are flowing away from the lord you are drifting and let's be very careful it's a responsibility of every believer to talk to someone about the lord jesus christ that's why he saved us when he saved us he gave us a responsibility to tell others if we don't do that consistently then that's a sign that we are flowing away from the lord we are getting cold in our relationship with the lord and that's a very dangerous thing the other sign of um, um of um drifting away or flowing away from the lord is that uh, when we get thrilled from the things of the world uh so many times we get greater thrill from worldly things we see what the people of the world are doing and we get excited and we want to do the same thing apostle paul warns us against the love of uh, love of the world and the things in the world and he talks about that all these things will pass away they're only for time they'll just be gone uh, don't get involved in that stay away from it that is a warning to the believers and he names those things over there that all these things will pass away they will not be any good at all and so we as christians we need to be on our guard that we don't get involved in all these things because that's a sure sign that we are flowing away from the lord and going into a dangerous place um uh there are times when we desire to have um enjoyment from worldly pleasures we see people doing that and nothing happens to them and there are things that you know is wrong and then you want to do the same thing paul tell, to, talks about it he said don't be lovers of pleasure more than the lover of god pleasure and all those things to certain extent is good but let that not take place of god then when we reach a point when we find more pleasure in some of the worldly activities than meeting with the uh, then meeting with others who worship god i want us to be very careful along this line we as christians we need to have more fellowship with the believers to worship god together if we don't do that that's a sure sign that you are flowing away from the lord uh, for drifting far away spiritual death will occur, occur eventually so have more fellowship with or take time out to have fellowship with the lord's people uh, and pray with them read the word of god and encourage one another and you'll find that this will help you in your christian life build you up <coughs> too many times we miss out on these things you know recently we had our uh, the death of sister nisha and um, we had, had two lovely memorial service one was here one was in the community where she lives in the community where she lives the, the whole community came out i don't know how many were there several of them but when i looked around our own people uh we know nisha she used to come over here limping in crutches and all that doesn't matter what happened she was here every sunday and what happened we find find about there maybe what the life group people were they are doing the cooking and all that but then others maybe 6 7 10 of us were there and i felt very discouraged about it that we are fellowshipping we have a lady who went on to be with the lord faithfully served the lord and when it came to have fellowship and remember her memorial service there were hardly anyone there to do that even here in the church when we had it 
at just a few numbers they came out. I don't know what was the reason. But you see, those are signs of drifting away. Those are signs of flowing away from the Lord. If you neglect the fellowship of the believers, you don't want to do that. So let's be careful on that. If, if we find more pleasure in some of the worldly activities than meeting others in worship, that is a sure sign that you are flowing away from the Lord. You are going far away. And that's a warning that the Lord gives to you to do something about it. And maybe because we are here today, that's a warning to do something about it. Because if you don't do anything to correct the situation, you'll find yourself <coughs> destroyed. As I said, that when, when we realized that the boat was flowing away, drifting, we immediately began to do something. If we hadn't done something, we wouldn't be here to tell the story today. It could have been a big disaster. But we thank God that we remember that. Now, what do we do uh, about it? What are the um, way to correct it? We read in Second uh, uh, Peter, spiritually speaking, this involves diligence. Diligence means paying attention to it, getting involved in it more and more. It says, wherefore, the other brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Reading the word of God, learning the scriptures, and making it sure that you are a believer, your faith is strong, that you take the scriptures, study it, and be very firm on what you read and what you believe. And then Peter says that you will never fall. You won't drift away if you are strong in the word of God. If you are strong in praying, you won't drift away. Um, <clears throat> there is no place for retirement for Christians. You cannot say that, well, you know, I've been a Christian for so many years. Uh, and now that's enough for me. I will retire, I'll stay home. And uh, forget about uh, what Jesus has done for me. That, there is no place for that. We need to live a life that is a continuous life with the Lord. Always. Always worshipping the Lord. Always living for the G Jesus Christ. Always talking to him. Because one day Jesus will come. And he will come for those who are ready. Those who are ready to go and we need to be ready. There's no retirement. You don't retire. You be active all the time in the Lord. And as I said, there are undercurrents. We must always be guard for undercurrents. And uh, undercurrent is like temptations that come our way. We are not aware of it. We're not sure about it. We look at on top, everything it looks good. But the temptation comes and takes away. Whoa, it, it does war against our soul. Temptations, they try to fight against us. The thing that we should not do, it makes it do fleshly nature. It takes the fleshly nature and begins to war against us. So we as believers, we need to be aware of it. We need to be aware of the undercurrent. We need to be aware of the temptations that come our way. And then fight it against it. Stand up to it. <coughs> the important thing will be, to go against the tide. Now, uh, if, you are, if you are flowing away, if the tide is sweeping you away, and you don't do anything about it, then you will end up in disaster. So one of the things is that you need to keep rowing. Even though you are going against the tide, you need to keep rowing. You need to let the engine keep running. If it dies, then you are in trouble. So we keep rowing. Keep exercising, keep uh, reading the word of God, keep praying, keep witnessing. Those are some of the things that will keep us going it's to help us overcome the temptation. There are many tides that sweep, up us, sweep us away. Sometimes peer pressure, popularity, peer pressure. We look at others doing something and you feel like doing the same thing because the neighbor has a new car, you want to have a new car too. Because the neighbor has brought in a 15-inch uh, TV, you want to do that too. If the neighbor has brought in a new 
piece of clothing, you see that and you say, well, I want to do that too. Trying to do what they are doing. And young people are so easily caught into that. They see that others are doing it. And so they want to do it too. And let's be very careful. Modernism, there are a lot of modernistic ideas that are coming up that are not in the scriptures, that are not biblical. And they go against the teachings of the Bible. And we need to know <coughs> what is right and what is wrong. There are lots of false doctrines that are coming. People are teaching all kinds of things. And we need to be very, very careful on this false doctrine thing. We, we, we hear and see all the time. And a lot of believers get caught in that uh, false teachings. You know, we have this uh, um, uh, universal church coming up with some false teaching that, you know, you take water and you take this thing and you take that salt and what and what not um, uh, to get healing. And, and there's so many people, even from our church, they go over there. They feel that this is it, but that's false doctrine. Nowhere in the scriptures, nowhere in the Bible, you learn anything like that. So let's be very careful on this false doctrines thing. Not only that, there are so many other false doctrines. If it doesn't agree with the scriptures, come and talk to us. Find out what it is all about. If it does not agree with the scriptures, don't believe it. Don't go uh, and get sold in. So many times we neglect the things that are of God. We get indifference. We... Uh, lack of concern about the things of God and important things and they, they overtake us. We, we, we allow them to come in our lives and that shows that we are drifting away. Sometimes uh, <clears throat> we say that majority people are doing that and sometimes believers look at it and say, oh, you know, that church is doing this. Sometimes the church as a whole begins to get sold out because they say that that church is doing it. Why can't we do this? We try to drift away with the majority. And I want us to be careful. The majority is not always right. The Bible is always right. <coughs> Let's get that straight. The Bible is always right. Not the majority. Majority may be doing things that may be right. But not necessarily. So if anything, anytime you have majority doing something, cross check it with the Bible. Does it agree with the Bible? Does it agree with the doctrines that we have? If it not, throw it out. So let's be very careful in that. Now these are just some of the things. Very um, uh, briefly, I've tried to bring it to your attention to realize that it could be possible that we are flowing away, that we are drifting. And we need to wake up and get ourselves, correct ourselves, begin to row against the tide if it has we, if we're drifting, the danger of drifting is very real. You know, we'll be foolish to say this cannot happen to me. Or it's not happening in our church. It is happening. All the time it's happening. And we have to be careful. <coughs> many believers, they flow away from it. Go away from the Lord because of so many things that are happening. And we need to be very careful. So let's look at our personal life. Let's look at ourselves. Don't worry about anybody else. Let's look at ourselves and ask honestly, uh, am I drifting? Just close your eyes for a few moments and think about it. Think about your personal life. Honestly ask yourself, is my desire to study God's word and pray diminishing? Is it getting less and less? Maybe two years ago, I was reading the word of God so much more, trying to study, apply myself for several hours. But today, it's not that. It's going down, down, down. <coughs> then you need to, you are in danger of flowing away and hitting a rock can be have a disastrous experience. Just ask that honestly. Is my desire to study God's word and pray diminishing. Did I spend less time to pray now than two years ago? My desire to be with God's people, is it less now or is it more? Think about it. 
And I think we need to do something. If we have less desire to read the word of God, if we have less desire to pray, we need to straighten out. We are flowing away in the tide. And if we don't do anything, don't do anything, we'll end up in disaster. If we are not meeting up with the believers, we are having more fellowship with the unbelievers, you are flowing away and there is disaster ahead of it. And so maybe today you are here, God is speaking to you and he needs you to straighten out because the moment you find out you are in the wrong place and you're not doing what is required of you, God is saying, okay, straighten out. Just like I said, then, our boat was drifting. We didn't realize it until we <coughs> noticed that we were not where we should be. And the moment we realized we were drifting, flowing away from the spot where we were, we did something. We did something immediately. And that's why I'm here to tell the story today. If it was correcting, then I don't know what the story would have been. So this afternoon, I'm asking you to make a search. Do your uh, self-examination. Search your heart and see if there is something that is drifting you away. Something that is taking you away and you are getting away from the Lord. Reading the word of God, praying and witnessing. Then say, Lord, help me. Forgive me and I will uh, help me to come back to the place where I should be. Let us pray. <coughs> Hallelujah. Praise God Almighty. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, that through your word we lead and we get the warning to prepare ourselves and correct our position. If there's someone here who is flowing away from the Lord, drifting away, I pray, O oh God Almighty, that they will correct the situation. Do whatever is necessary to come back to you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that none of the people present here would so flow away so far that they will be destroyed. Lord, but every single person over here might come to you confessing their sins and wrong things and be strong and mighty in your hands. Yes, Lord, in Jesus' name, I commit them into your hands. Amen. <laughs> Yeah.
to see you all this uh, morning we welcome you in the house of the lord whether you are here physically or watching us online uh, we want to thank you and uh, thank god for this opportunity and we know that you've been blessed today it's a tough message hard for us to receive we may be thinking no we are okay we do our you know we read our bibles we pray and that's good enough but i want to encourage you to relook at ourselves it's this message is as much uh, as important as it's to you as it is to me all all of us we need to really search our lives and see where we are drifting away and to uh, draw, uh, pull us back in into the current where god wants us to be praise the lord hallelujah our um, um announcements for this week is that Uh, from 3 o'clock, we have our, our children's pr- uh, program, but it's online. Uh, uh, I'm sure uh, you know uh, which classes or uh, teachers you uh, uh, belong to, I mean, the class that you belong to. And so from 3 p.m. this afternoon, we'll be having our online Sunday school. And if you're not sure, you can talk to one of your teachers or talk to me or one of the leaders and we will help you. Uh, get online uh, this afternoon, three o'clock. So it'll be just one hour or sometimes it's less, but it's a good time for our children to uh, learn something from the Word of God in their, uh, in their peer group. So remember that, that's three o'clock. And then from six o'clock, uh, uh, similarly, uh, Go- we use Google Meet to have our fellowship. So that's 6 p.m. And you're most welcome to join and be part of that uh, pr- uh, fellowship, online fellowship. Uh, it's just one hour and uh, it's good spend time uh, singing songs and just sharing testimonies and hearing from the word and also praying for others. So remember three o'clock is our children's uh, Sunday school online and 6 p.m. is our uh, evening church uh, fellowship online. And then during the week on Tuesday, we'll have a similar online uh, uh, prayer session. We don't meet, we won't be meeting here during the week. Uh, but remember, that's from 8 to, you'll see all uh, information in the bulletin. But Tuesday, 8 p.m., 8 to 9, we have a prayer session online uh, using Google Meets, Meet. And, uh, or is it Meets or Meet? And uh, that's on Tuesday. And um, 
I think Thursday your area minister will contact you for what's happening in your area uh, on, on Thursdays. But then on, uh, on, uh, oh, sorry, on Wednesday, a men's fellowship, we'll have a, a Viber group called a men's uh, group. So instead of Friday, we'll have it on Wednesday. Um, and uh, if you're interested in just joining in that uh, Viber call and having fellowship with the uh, uh, men folks, do let us know and we'll put you in that call. And then on uh, Friday, the youth will be meeting 7.30 using Google Meets as well. Uh, and good thing about virtu meeting virtually, you don't, uh, no, you don't have to turn your video on, you don't have to put your makeup on. Uh, you, you know, you, uh, you can just have the audio, so you can, uh, and you can be in your car or anywhere, it doesn't matter. Uh, or you can inv invite your friends. So that's a good thing. You don't have to spend, you know, get a cab and come to church. Or, so there are, there are benefits to having uh, uh, sessions online, uh, services online. Uh, so that's on Friday. Youth, please encourage your youth, uh, your children. Uh, maybe your friends join in uh, 7.30 on Friday. And then on Saturday, we have a special request from Baulevu, our Baulevu pastor to help uh, clean up the yard uh, uh, there because we're not having services there at the moment and uh, just need to clean, uh, cut the grass and uh, things like that. So men, uh, 6 a.m. will leave uh, to, for Baulevu. And if you have brush cutter or knife or rake or whatever, and then we'll just go have, if, we, if there's a lot of us, then within one hour, we should be able to clean up the compound there. Uh, it would be a big help. So um, if you're willing to help out, 6 a.m. we'll leave and we can uh, communicate during the week on the plans for this Saturday, coming Saturday. And then on Sunday, we'll have our regular uh, services, uh, 8.30 and uh, Hindi and 11 o'clock English, uh, physically we'll be meeting here. And then cleaning flower arrangements by Suva Life Group. Okay, and those who live in Suva uh, will be meeting on Saturday. Um, I'll communicate with you uh, on what time we'll meet on Saturday to uh, clean up the hall and do the flower arrangements. And the rest of the information you'll find in the bulletin. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, you can come and do uh, talk with us, and we'll help you out with that. Um, and uh, just we are set to announce, uh, if you don't know one, we are also happy for her because now uh, uh, Auntie Nisha, I think she was what, 70, over 70, and um, uh, she had a difficult life, very tough woman, but you couldn't shake her faith in Christ. She was solid, uh, she was living alone, and uh, and, uh, but she, was, she became a role model for us, especially young people, because she had um, um, problems with the leg. Uh, but whether she's sick or what, she'll be here. Unless she's really sick and cannot uh, get out of bed, that's the only day you'll find her not here. But she will come with a walker or crutches and, uh, or... Um, um, with a hand walker, what you call it, guide, uh, something like that. But she'll be here. Doesn't matter what, rain or shine, she'll be here. Get on a cab, uh, she'll walk from her house to the road, slowly and slowly. And she became a role model. And the best thing was that the community, Brother Edwin and uh, his group was trying to reach in Narere. Uh, it's a squatter settlement. It's a big settlement. And uh, they've been trying to reach uh, that community for so long. But it took Auntie Nisha's uh, death for that community to open up. And they even allowed us to have the funeral service and uh, prayer meetings in the uh, um, community shed. And they even offered to uh, host another uh, prayer meeting later on or, or use the shed uh, whenever we want. So we want to thank God, and the, and the homes are opening up. They've been asking for prayer, and, um, you know, Pastor Edwin is a, he's a pastor there in that area now. You might have to open one church in there somewhere. Um, but, you know, God is uh, using, um, God used Auntie Nisha 
uh, to uh, to have his word reach that community there. And we know, um, and some of the families, they came here for the first time, came into a church for the first time uh, on one of the prayer meetings on Wednesday night. So we thank God for doing that. And uh, so Auntie Nisha left a legacy and something for us to uh, learn and uh, I know that one day when we leave this earth, what do we leave uh, behind? Uh, uh, bad memories or good memories and uh, legacy for others. So uh, that's, uh, we want to thank God for Auntie Nisha's life. Um, yes, so the, uh, that's all I have for you this morning. Let's all stand. And uh, we'll, we've come to the end of our service. And uh, please remember the offering bag is at the back. Uh, as you leave, you can uh, place your offerings and tithes there. We want to thank God. Uh, this, uh, there are some names uh, that we've been praying for uh, that have uh, been sick and they've sent uh, requests. Uh, we've prayed for them this morning. And we want to thank God that he's touching lives, still touching lives. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes we don't see God moving, but, we, but it's happening, it's happening. Praise the Lord. I'd like to invite Sister, if you could come and just lead us in prayer and for a conclusion. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We thank you once again for this time. We thank you for your servant who has spoken your word, and we thank you for reminding us about our walk with you. Father, we come before you. We thank you for, for each and every individual that are seated before you. Thank you for the portion of your word that we have received this morning. Father, we thank you for your servants that are doing your work. Thank you for their lives. Thank you for strengthening, strengthening them for such a time as this. Father, we thank you for your word that has been shared in Fiji and around the world. We thank you for all the servants, Lord. Father, we thank you for today. Bless each and every individual that are here. We adore you and exalt you and we magnify your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, our service is dismissed. Remember our online services and we will see you again. God bless you.